Hi folks, it's me, Brandon Johnson. Today I'm going to take you for a ride on a beautiful 2004 Tahoe Q4 fishing ski. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. First thing we do before we put the boat in the water is we put the plug in. It goes back here underneath the out drive. Hand tight's good enough for a day on the water. When we're done for the day, we go ahead and take that plug out. It's got a built pump that kicks water out of the engine compartment. It's hardwired, hot wired. Eventually though, it'll run that battery dead and then we have a floating pond inside the boat and we don't want that. Alright, so remember, the boat's got to be in the water to run. It uses water to keep the engine cold. So if it's not in the water, it'll burn up the engine. So how far do you back your boat in the water? Just till you see the trance of the boat float. When you see the rear of the boat float, or in this case, float, you know that's good. A lot of people struggle putting them back on the trailer. I'll give you a few hints when we get back. So, you get the boat in the water. This is a TKS system. If it hadn't been started in a while, you may have to choke or prime it a little bit by, by pushing in this button. That releases it from gear, giving it a little throttle. But otherwise, you should just be able to turn the key and it fires right up. Okay? Three things that won't start. I'll include a link to a video right up here that explains what to do when your boat won't start. But to do it quick, click, 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 dead battery. That's easy. Turn the key and nothing happens whatsoever. If it's in gear, it won't start. If it turns over, turns over and will not fire, most likely the kill switch right here. It's a safety feature feature so shifting real easy you push in the button forward is right there the alphas aren't real smooth but it's not real hard either neutral so again you only have to hit the button when you get into the gear reverse just like that neutral so go on into forward now tilt and trim I'm gonna include another link in the video right up here that explains how to operate tilt and trim to make you familiar with that how you operate it on this in terms of using it hit the button up hit the button down Quick thing to note, see your gauge working, up, down, make sure you put it all the way up when you put it on the trailer. Another thing, I've had a lot of customers are real excited to drive, when they hammer down with the throttle, they've accidentally got their thumb on the trim up button, okay? So the boat will start without this button on, this is your master power. All the master power does is turn everything else on, like the horn, I hope you can hear that. Bill's Pumps Automatic, but the National Marine Manufacturers Association that governs how all boats are built says you got to have that switch. So navigation lights, they're in here, they plug in up front and in the back, red and green and the white. In the middle is off, down, anchor light, stop tonight, okay? Here's your live well buttons, auto, that's an auto fill, manual, you can fill it up then switch it to auto and it'll just keep, you know, fresh water going in. Blower, that ventilates the engine compartment, gets rid of those fumes. Courtesy lights, really hard to find during the daytime. Easier to find at night. I don't even know if there is any. Huh. Uh, place to plug your phone in right here. Stereo's right over here. CD player.
hopefully you can hear that jam. So it's lurks to shut it off. My grandpa said, boy, you can use the radio for anchor when I'm fishing. It works. Okay. So before you accelerate, I always recommend shutting the window. You'll see a lot of boats going up and down the lake with the windows open. What happens though, this begins to bow to the shape of this windshield. This is perfectly split right here. So that's good. All right. So with the alpha drives, you kind of got to accelerate the boat on the plane. All right. When you accelerate it on the plane, then you're running smooth, then you can slow down or speed up, you know, tr trim up, get on top of the water and go. For this portion of the test drive, what I'm going to do is take the camera from Billy, I'm going to put the boat on the plane, show you the gauge is working, then I'm going to accelerate to full speed, trim down, then I'm going to trim up. That does a few things. Number one, it shows you how releasing the boat, tilt and trim makes it operate. Also, you get to see full speed. It's important for me to run the boat at full speed to allow you the opportunity to kind of hopefully, through me, feel how the boat feels with a heavy load on it. If it's gonna hit, miss, spit, and sputter, it's gonna do that at top speed, not low speed. So for now, Billy, if you wanna have a seat, I'll take the camera from you. And I'm gonna show you your gauge is working as we accelerate. So right here, we're coming up to tip. Right here, we have our tachometer, our tilt and trim, our speedo, Oil pressure, fuel, volts, okay? It's kind of rough out here today. See, and there's a 40 foot cruiser right over there. Uh, so what we're gonna try to do here is run over to this cove. Once we get the boat back on the trailer, I'll do an exterior walk around, interior walk around, kind of show you some condition stuff. And uh, there you have it. All right, so now we're out here beyond the no weight buoy, so I'm gonna accelerate. Maybe. There you go. So we accelerate the boat on the plane. See how the nose comes right down flat. From that point, we can slow down or we can speed up. It's hard to do with one hand. There we go. Let me slow down a little bit. We'll try to hit the coat and get out of this chop. But looking at our gauges, our speedo works. We're right around 30. Temp's still coming up. The water's cold. We're trimmed down around about 25 miles an hour. Oil pressure's good. Gotta see him. The volts are right. good. We know the volts are coming up because our alternator's working good. So once we kind of hit the back of this cove here. We'll open it up even better. All right, so now that we're out of the chop, drive at full speed trim down okay all our gauges work which is a bonus I only say that because it's rare that they all work I tell people who've never run a boat that all the gauges work at one time however this one does all work at one time all right so now we're trimmed down let's go ahead and push it almost halfway up at top speed okay so for fishing there's really no method in terms of speeds that you use but for water sports you know essentially get the on anything kneeboard ski tube get the tension tight on the line right and then you accelerate the boat on the plane so doing water sports I recommend to push it a little bit harder and as soon as you come up the plane go ahead and start to slow back down because you want to maintain about 25 mile an hour, 20, somewhere right in there. That's a very comfortable cruise speed. Really anything under 3,500 RPM is a good cruise speed. See the boat runs exceptionally well and all our gauges work and everything looks wonderful. Now what we're going to do is go put her back on the trailer and we'll run through the condition and maybe go through some more operational stuff. But I'm really impressed with how she runs for you.
Okay, before we put it back on the trailer, a few little things here. Got this front fish finder on. It's finding fish. Let's go fishing. Okay, so that's got a power on and off. So you hold the button for five quick seconds. Trolley motor plugs in right here. We, we're waiting for a bolt to help hold it into place. But there's where it plugs in for the electrical. So, you have storage underneath this seat. Storage underneath this seat. And here's the two uh, trailer straps and the two pedestals that go underneath the two chairs in the back. Like back there on the deck and up here in the bow so you can sit up nice and tall and fish, okay? But the vinyl's great here. Gel coat's great here. And then for the fish and ski part, if you want to use it truly as a bow, see this whole thing snaps in up here. It's in good shape. So that'll snap in so it won't come out, okay? So there is the bow. Now we'll hit the back trailer. All right, so before we go to the trailer again, we're kind of playing with this stuff. So the live well, I forgot it's a fishing ski, so it's got some more, so much systems. So basically when you hit that button on manual, it'll fill it up, then switch it to automatic, and it'll just slightly trickulate water, and there's the drain for how you empty it, okay? We're gonna go shut that off. This is just storage, your batteries are beneath it. Here, you got that plastic box for storage that comes off. Here's your batteries. Battery. Take a look at the motor. There's the 43190 horse. So that's your start motor battery there. And then your 12 volt big one for that right there. So while it's running here, you got a good stick. Oil looks good. It's not milky. That's really what I'm trying to show you. Hey, okay, that's one-handed. That may be the first time I've ever got that. That happens. Okay. There we go. And shut that. Shut that. So these are the seats that pop out. I had these reupholstered back seat and then it's got storage underneath okay this seat pops out too storage in the gunnels captain seats ski storage on the floor port side captain seat it's kind of tight at the seams here isn't it here well storage box ski storage on the floor right here all right so now Back to trailing. So when people put it on the trailer, the reason they struggle is to get the trailer too deep in the water. You want to have the, tr well, we're way out of the water, but I'll drop off Billy and then start this over. <laughs> you want to have enough trailer in the water to catch the boat naturally, but you don't want to have so much trailer in the water that you can't see where the trailer is. So the middle bunks are, are really more than more guide bunks than support bunks. So as long as those are just barely out of the water, that trailer is made specifically and only for your boat if it fits another boat's by accident. So once you get it in the middle of those bunks, those bunks just slightly out of the water up top towards the front of the truck, or towards the back of the truck, so to speak, it'll glide right on there. All right, I'll drop you off, will you? Look, it's a neat, nice, beautiful fall day here at the Lake of the Ozarks. All right, there we have it. All right, so it's still in the water a little deeper than I like, but when you have two people, I guess it's easier. See those front two bunks right there? I like those just out of the water. Not under the water. We'll get her on. So we just look center to center, center of the trailer, center of the boat. Just like that. Once you get it on, trim up a little bit. Okay. You might even straight ahead. So now, once you get it kind of set on here, nothing's herky jerky. You see people that are goosing this throttle. That's how people get hurt. So just slow, steady, applied pressure. Tight. 
you go ahead and come back to neutral. Okay, I always shake it just to make sure that is neutral. And then I shut her down and I trim it all the way up. When this loud ass boat isn't by me and you trim it all the way up, you'll hear it scream at you when it's all the way up. Now when you shut your key off, the gauges go off. Okay, this one doesn't scream. You just hear nothing. When it's up all the way, it just goes off. So there we go. So get the bow eye tied on the eyelet. And there we are. All right, now we're out of the water, so we're gonna take a look at the exterior conditions. And well, this is just a grease spot right here. This will clean up from the trolling motor. But it does have one little burn spot right here in the carpet. That's the only one I see. Okay, so there's not much I can do about that. But other than make you aware, there's like one little pinky sized burn spot in the carpet. All right, now let's take a look at the gel coat. Battery's getting low, gotta go fast. So obviously the trailer's nice, it was made for it. Now I wanted to ask you right here, see one side's nice, one side's nicked. I can just cut this even on both sides like this and then take that wax behind it and it'll be nice. So I'd recommend letting me do that. Play the ear call. Nice and shiny, boys got her waxed. Hole looks great. You know, on the outside now, since we did all that gel work, all there is is nicks and uh, pin striping, but really nothing in the gel. See right here, so there's one spot. So cut these even right here on both sides would really help that. Okay. Uh, nothing on the back. Crop's in great shape. One thing I will do when this dries off is get some touch up paint, kind of hit this. I can also put a scag guard on it if you want me to, the chrome fin. Your call though. Well, sure hope you like it. I'm gonna go back and put all this together. Appreciate the opportunity. All right, looking at your canvas, it's custom built for this boat. We're gonna unsnap it here. It's in great shape. Okay, I'm back at the office, got off the water on your boat. So, a few things to point out. Number one, you know, we got her cleaned up pretty, but when we ship it to you, sometimes we can put the cover on, sometimes we can't. It depends on the wind and the weather. So for this specific boat, I'm going to put the cover down. I'm going to use shrink wrap tape around the edges, so it should keep it relatively clean inside. But if he gets into a bad windstorm or something, we're going to take the cover off, and then you have to give it a bath when you get it. Um, also, something to point out. From a paperwork standpoint, anything at all to do with your boat or boating, please don't hesitate to call me on my cell phone. But anything to do with paperwork, once we've finalized everything, meaning, you know, your bill of sale and such, uh, Diane is my secretary, and her job is to process your paperwork, meaning, you know, I gave your money and your bill of sale to her, then she sends you the titles in the mail. Her number is 573-374-7172. She's here Monday, Wednesday, Friday from 10 a.m., to 5 p.m. Central Standard Time. Again, boats, boating, deep sea fishing, and Puerto Vallarta water sports. Anything at all to do with boating, call me. Anything to do with paperwork, call Diane. Thanks. I appreciate the opportunity. I'll see you on the water, maybe. Models, bottles. Hey.